Hey everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of Flick News. Izola here with Flick Direct, and I've gotten some information about some new movies that are coming out, and I thought I'd share them with you. So grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and let's get this started. First, it was announced that Wuthering Heights is getting a reboot again, and here's what we know so far. Warner Brothers Motion Pictures Group has secured the rights to Wuthering Heights, and it's going to star Margot Robbie as Catherine and Jacob Elordi as Heathcliff. For those of you who are not familiar with the story, it was written by Emily Bronte, and she actually went by a male pseudoname back then because back in the day it was very difficult for women to get things published because women apparently didn't write or, you know, have a brain. But back to the story. It is a hot mess, in my opinion. It's extremely toxic. It is filled with, you name something negative, it's in there. Examples of this are abuse, violence, uh, alcoholism, class conflict, and I mean, look, you can throw in some gaslighting there too if you want, but it's, it's seriously just anything bad, that's what this relationship represents in this book. There's supposed to be this love story in there between Catherine and Heathcliff, and it's, but really, with everything going on, you are just trying to scream to both of them, head to the hills, do not pass go, do not collect $100, just leave this relationship, just go. Having said that, it's extremely well written. I honestly recommend everybody to read this book if you haven't already. I had to read it in school. Um, so I was uh, privy to all of this negativity at a very young age. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's rough. So just be prepared. But again, it is a very good read and it really talks about a lot of topics that we still even struggle with today. I mean, it's a classic for a reason. So Wuthering Heights is still in the work, so I haven't heard anything about the script or what directions they're gonna take this in. I'm really hoping that they stick more to the book and not really do what past uh, adaptations have done, which is make it more romantical, <laughs> so to speak, uh, instead of really focusing on those hard topics that I had mentioned before. Seriously, some of these adaptations try to make it more like a Pride and Prejudice situation where there is a true romance in there somewhere. That is absolutely not the case for uh, this book. Once they drop more information about the movie and we get some, you know, script information, I will definitely be back to share that with you. In other news, Sony announced Friday that the next Spider-Man movie is in the works. Uh, and they should start filming next year, and the release date will be July 24th, 2026. It seems that Tom Holland is going to be super busy, especially if they're going to start filming Spider-Man, because he's going to be working on Chris Nolan's new film. And who knows if he may or may not have a cameo in Avengers Doomsday. I mean, I would hope he would, but we're not really entirely sure where that one's even going yet, so we'll just have to wait and see. Although we don't have any details on the script yet, we can obviously assume that it's going to pick up where we left off at No Way Home, where no one remembers who Peter Parker is or that he was Spider-Man. So poor Peter's gonna have to make new friends and uh, maybe try to get the old ones to remember him. But it's pretty sad and I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Now again, we don't have any information except for the potential release date and I know Sony's really you know trying to make sure that they keep those deadlines so hopefully they'll get that script done soon we'll get some more information uh you know maybe Tom Holland will come out and you know say some things and let us know what's going on so come back check in and if I get any information I will definitely let you know okay everybody get ready for a throwback to your childhood or your parents' childhood if you are young and watching this, which I'm going to feel pretty old about this time. A movie adaptation of The Oregon Trail is actually in the works at Apple. Um, and I'm kind of excited about this because in the 90s, 
kid grew up playing that game. It's in super hilarious, uh, especially with all of the things that always go wrong. I, I still don't know to this day anybody, rarely a few, that made it to the end. The project is in early development with directors Will Speak and Josh Gordon. The screenplay will be written by the Lucas Brothers and Max Reisman, and it's going to pretty much be based on the game's depiction uh, of the 19th century pioneer life as a wagon train heads west. Originally created in 1971, the Oregon Trail became a cult classic, I guess you would call it, to us younglings in the 90s. Um, it was pretty much filled with dark humor. Uh, for example, everybody was dying of dysentery, your ox would wander off, and you'd also, you know, break a wagon wheel, you had to fix it, thieves, you hunt too much, and then you can't carry all of the food back. So it, look, there's a lot of things that went wrong. Typhoid, I mean, I, you, you name it, someone's pretty much dying of something. There's no information on the script as of yet, but it looks like it's going to be action comedy based with some little musical scenes here and there, kind of like what Barbie did, which I think is, is a pretty good idea when it comes to the Oregon Trail. Having played Oregon Trail, like I said, it's really appreciated that they are going this route and not trying to make it some very serious pioneers traveling west because I think we have enough of those out there and some of them you know in the wild wild west aren't really doing as well as we had hoped <laughs> horizon um still haven't seen it yet but I will be actually this upcoming weekend if you have not played this game or if you just want a blast from the past, you can actually Google search it and find it online. I have not done that yet because I don't wanna get sucked into it or rage quit because I broke an ankle and died. Or Mary, I was gonna say it gets typhoid. <laughs> but, typhoid Mary. Um, so yeah, I may go back and play it, but I do recommend just checking it out, kind of giving yourself an idea, or even just check out the memes that are online. They're really, really funny. There's so much more, oh, hold on. There's so much more to discuss. However, uh, I try to pick only three or four topics just because there's just too much, too much to discuss. Uh, like Venom and how it didn't do great. Do you wanna say hi? Yeah, say hi to everybody. You're the one that makes all the noise behind the scenes. Anyway, like I said, far too much to discuss. I try to pick my three favorites that I've uh, seen in the movie news. But if you go to our website at flickdirect.com, we do also have a lot of other stories and videos that you can watch. And again, subscribe to those YouTube channels because we've got a lot going on pretty much almost on a daily basis. We're trying to spread some things out, but you know, there's just so much like my review of Deadpool and Wolverine, you know, which if you haven't bought it yet, go get it. I'm so, I'm so excited about that. I'm gonna watch it again. Um, so yeah, so just make sure that you go and check out our website, YouTube channels. You can follow us on Instagram uh, and Facebook and threads, all of the social media. We love sharing things, so you know, you'll never not be entertained. And with that, this concludes this week's episode of Flick News. Please be sure to like and subscribe to all of our channels so you never miss out on any entertainment news. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.